Hey guys, Harley Q here with another video, and today we are talking about the annoying things while game collecting. Now, you're probably wondering, haven't you already done this topic before? And the answer is, yes, I have. It's a topic that you can kind of go back to. I probably mentioned somewhere in the video that this would be a topic that I would in fact return to, so here we are. I kind of made another list of some more things that I found annoying while game collecting, and some of you actually gave me some ideas too of the things that annoy you while game collecting, so maybe we could make another video if we can think of more things, because game collecting can be really annoying. So let's start with the first one. Now, this is in no particular order, these are just kind of things that I thought about when I'm trying to down in my notebook. And I don't really, I don't necessarily have a script when I make my videos, I just sort of talk from my heart and just kind of see where it takes me. So the first one I want to bring up is Dirty Games. Now, this one's probably a strange one for you, because you're probably thinking, why would Dirty Games... Sometimes when you pick up a game from, say, a Goodwill or a yard sale, or if you're just buying it off the Facebook Marketplace, they'll just hand you the items and then you leave. That's the end of the interaction between the two. Some people actually say, hey, I'm going to go through the stuff. Generally, I don't. I usually find the one item that I'm looking for in the lot, and that's the one I look at, and pretty much if everything else looks somewhat okay, I just take everything and then I come home. Which has bitten me in the butt several times, and the reason for that is dirty games. There have been times where I've opened up a game and I've had literal dirt inside of the case. I've had bits of rocks inside of a case one time. I actually should have filmed it. It was rather disgusting but yeah dirty games is definitely something um especially with like nintendo cartridges you'll get a lot of um corrosion that will happen on the pins and you'll have to clean that out not necessarily dirt but you know you get yourself your um, rubbing alcohol and a q-tip generally and it comes right out but i have had to open up cartridges because there has been dirt inside of a cartridge now i'm not really sure how they're getting dirt inside of a cartridge but it's happened so definitely having dirt or any kind of debris inside of a game or a case has definitely been something that has annoyed me while collecting games. But yeah, I've had to, I've had even systems. Systems definitely is probably the biggest out of this when getting used systems is you have a lot of dirt or dust in them. So I have a Wii here and I actually had already cleaned this, but when I had originally got this Wii, this is the one I got from a yard sale not that long ago when I got it with a lot. There was a huge chunk of dust that was sitting inside the fan here, so I actually cleaned it out as best as I could. I really should open it up, but I didn't really bother. But um, this one was actually in somewhat good shape. But I have gotten systems like that Dreamcast lot that I did. I actually opened up that system and cleaned it out and it was all water damage and that's why it didn't work. That all of those controllers and all of those games were absolutely disgusting, so that's definitely something that's annoying while game collecting is just dirt in general, because apparently people don't know how to clean their crap before they give it to you. The next thing that I find super annoying while game collecting is scratch discs. Now, I use this example because this was, um, I don't remember exactly when I got this one, but I cleaned it and everything and it still doesn't work. You can't really see it on camera, but this one has a giant scratch that goes right across the disc and it's making it completely unable to read. And there are several times where you're at a Goodwill or you're at a yard sale, you're at a pawn shop, and you see a disc that you don't already own, and you open up your case and the disc is all scratched up and there's no way that it's probably going to read that data. Or you take the chance of getting it and being unable to actually play the game because the disc is damaged. So that's when you get into the, the debate of, do I take the risk of buying this game and having it not work? And that's why part of the reason why I buy games for the prices that I do is because I don't like taking risks and knowing that they're not going to work. There's a difference from when you buy from like a used game store and the game doesn't work, you can generally take it back and get a refund. But there are places like the Goodwill where once you buy it, it's yours. So just be aware of that. That's definitely something annoying that's while game collecting. While talking about scratches and things being broken, definitely another one that's super annoying is damaged cases. Like, for example, actually, I got this from my last month's pickups. I actually did show it, but there's the cracked case, you know, cracked cases or ripped or the ripping of books, books, or the ripping of manuals or missing manuals and um, missing sleeves or ripped sleeves and all of that stuff. That's super annoying while game collecting because you want to have generally most people, generally most people when collecting, they want to have things in somewhat pristine condition. 
And when I say pristine, I mean no rips and things like that. So, you know, having a rip in the plastic here or, you know, a damaged cover art, it does bring the value down of your item. I don't necessarily care for that kind of stuff, but there are some people who are super crazy about how the shape of their actual game case is. For me, I care more about the actual disc, I've said that before. The actual condition of the disc is more important to me rather than the, um, rather than the actual appearance of it. If the disc works, I'm generally happy. I would like for the case to be nice, but it definitely can be annoying. I mentioned manuals, ripped manuals or missing manuals can be super annoying, especially when you pick up a game and you're so excited to get it and, oh, this one has a manual. Um, you're super excited because you see it at a yard sale and you run to grab it and you open it up and there is no manual inside. And I have mentioned a couple times that I do get a little upset when there aren't manuals in things because I do actually like to go through manuals. There are some of the manuals in some of these older games where there's just a ridiculous amount of information. Like, this is Shinobi, I'm gonna use this one as an example, but like, some of the artwork in it is like absolutely gorgeous. Just, I like to go through them and it tells you things about characters that you would not know while playing the game. They don't really do that anymore. There's not a lot of hidden information within manuals. Most games don't even come with manuals anymore, unfortunately, but definitely something that can be annoying. Especially there are certain games where you need the manual in order to play it because the tutorial does not teach you everything that is happening within the game. So definitely uh, manu missing manuals or ripped manuals or like a water damaged manual, which is the example with uh, this Call of Duty game too. Again, this one was perfect example of the most annoying thing while game collecting. You can see that the cover art is damaged. The manual is damaged as well. I actually, this is one of those that I made together. It's not actually a complete in box one. I just made it complete in box. The manual is, looks like it's been chewed on. These are some chew pieces from a small child or a dog. And the, the disc is ripped. So um, technically this is a complete in box one. This is not a, this is not my final copy. This is a copy I just made up because I had the extra case. I had the cover art and I had the manual and I made a, you know, complete in box. This um, is a prime example of an annoying thing while collecting is just getting just everything not working the way you want it to or looking the way you want it to. So another one, which this one might be kind of weird, is smelly. And you're probably thinking like, smelly? What? Smokers. As crazy as that sounds, smokers play video games. And um, sometimes their stuff smells. I actually, I'm holding this CD case, which thank God it no longer smells, but when I first got it, this was that very, one of the first videos I did on YouTube was about this lot and it was a smoker lot and everything was disgusting. Um, she gave me a bag of memory cards and the bags were like yellow tinted and stinky and I know she had animals cause there was like just fur and stuff in it and it was gross, it was absolutely gross. So I had to like sanitize everything and this, I remember this being super smelly and having to wipe it down and luckily I got the smell out of it. There's sometimes you really can't get smells out of stuff. There's There's been issues of stuff smelling bad, especially if it's stored in a wet, damp place. That is also another reason you get that kind of mildewy smell, which can be super annoying trying to get rid of. Uh, while speaking of this wonderful case, I will say another thing that's super annoying while game collecting is loose discs. I don't know why people find the need to just give you loose discs. Now, they're annoying to store. You know, I have a case that somebody gave me, but I hate it this way. I can't really keep track of what I have. And especially when I'm doing like price charting um, and I check really quick to see what I have. So you'll see when you're on like price charting, you'll see things like that it's in your collection, but it won't tell you if it's complete in box. It will just say that it's in your collection. So you would have to click on it to tell you whether or not it's actually there or not, I believe. When you actually click on in collection, it will tell you um, that you have everything. But if there's certain games in here that I could tell you, I don't think there's any PlayStation games that I have, but like my P PS2 collection, there's a lot where I have a lot on my wish list. All right. So um, there's like certain things in here that when I click on them, you know, it'll tell you if it's loose or whatnot, but you have to click on it. Like this one is, I don't have the manual for this one, which breaks my heart. And thank God I bought it when I did because it went up drastically. I think I only got it for 20. So that's, that's one thing that's kind of annoying with just having loose games is that 
when you're checking your catalog of where you keep your games or if you're looking through a game to play, you know, it's so much easier to just read along a bookshelf and just see, you know, like Shinobi or Jack and Daxter or Ratchet and Clank or whatever you're particularly looking for. It's so much easier to find it that way as opposed to having to flip through a book. Is it in here? You know, is it not in here? Um, it can be super frustrating. That and I feel like this is this is one of the ways having them in like this in a case like this is one of the ways that discs get damaged. And I just don't think this is an ideal way to store games. I mean, I think it's nice for people, you know, it's easier to just get rid of games and have them all stuck in one place, but this is how games get lost. I'm not a huge fan of this. At some point, I'm gonna go buy a lot on, um, I'm gonna buy a lot on eBay that will hopefully fix this situation because having it in here is just not ideal for me. I've actually had it where I bought games out in the wild and didn't realize till later that I already owned it and that it was in here. I've had issues where, oh, I've had instances where I've bought boxes or bought lots with just boxes in them and I've actually had the game in here and I've made a complete inbox that way. So I mean, like, I am not anti just buying a disc. I've mentioned that before that you can somehow make a complete inbox by getting disc manual box or whatever separately. But at the same time, for just storage purposes, buying loose games in bulk, especially like this, aren't, aren't great. I have to say having like a thing of loose games like this, I don't remember some of the games that are in here because I don't physically see them all the time. It's not like my PlayStation 2 bookcase where I l walk past it every single day and I can see and remember. I haven't opened this up since the last time I went through it, which I could not tell you when the last time I went through it. Not as not as frequently as when I've gone through the other games in which that I own. Another thing that is like the bane of my existence is stickers, particularly GameStop stickers. And you know what I mean? Because for whatever reason, some of the GameStop employees thought that it was a great idea to put it on the spine and not only the spine, but the spine of the cover art which is a pain to get off. I have been fortunate enough where I can get most of them off, but generally I end up just leaving them on because it makes me nervous trying to get them off the spine. And sometimes people like to stick stickers on cardboard, which I don't think people realize that getting a sticker off a of cardboard is not as easy as it sounds. So if you're one of those people who put stickers on games and their cover art or manual, you're a horrible person. Just want you to know that. But yeah, just like stickers on stuff is like really, you know, some of these, they're, they're so old that the sticker comes off right away. Sometimes there's multiple stickers. Like this one has another sticker, uh, has a sticker on top of a sticker. Generally some goo gone, it will get it right off, no problem. I usually just sit here and fight with it because that's just what I do. But why anyone would put a sticker on a spine is beyond me. And last but not least, one of the most annoying things that I find while game collecting, I, I mean, it, this doesn't necessarily bother me, but I could definitely see why this bothers some other people, is writing on a cartridge. This is actually one of the only examples I have of somebody writing on a cartridge. I didn't write on any of my cartridges, and every one that I've gotten since starting collecting hasn't really had writing. This is the only one that I have. So, Tommy, wherever you are, thank you for uh, giving up your Kirby Crystal Shards game because... I love this game. Yeah, you can see this person wrote all over it. I haven't cleaned it up because it doesn't really bother me so much. Probably at some point when I get seriously into displaying my games because my N64 games sit kind of in a drawer and everything's just in there. So you only see the top part, but I'm sure like once I get more collections of these games, I'm definitely going to have to go through and um, clean some of them. Generally my N64s are pretty clean because I've owned all of them. I've mentioned that before on this channel, that I've had these games, generally all of them, since I've had an N64, which was obviously back in the 90s, so, and the labels are in decent shape. Anything that I, that has that kind of stuff, I bought it that way, and yeah, I, would I at some point go through and upgrade certain games or whatever? Maybe? I... I'm not really sure. I'm kind of torn. Like, I would like to have a nice copy of all this stuff, but then it also comes at a price. Literally. Do I want to spend that extra money just to have a nice cartridge that's probably just going to sit on a shelf or sit in a drawer that I'm probably never really going to use? No, that just seems like a waste of money to me. How however, I'm willing to 
save some money and get something that is somewhat damaged or whatever. I bought a couple of those PlayStation 1 games last month that the cases were damaged and I said, I believe I said, that if I found them again and they were in better condition I would replace them, which I have done. I have replaced things with better condition things, but generally it's not something that I go out of my way to do. It's not like I'm gonna go somewhere and say, oh, Cur Kirby Crystal Shards and 64, I'm at a retro game store. My copy's not that great. Let me buy it at retail price and replace it with this one. No, I wouldn't do that. What I would do instead is if I'm out yard sailing and I see it sitting on a table there and it's like $2 for it, I'm gonna grab it, swap it out, and then sell this one on eBay or sell it on the Facebook Marketplace or something. That's what I would do, but I would not go out of my way to replace it unless it was beyond repair. But that's just how I operate. I know that a lot of people operate that way. I know some people will actually go out of their way to upgrade cartridges or upgrade games. To me, as long as the game runs, I'm a happy little person. Anyway, that's pretty much it for the video. Uh, make sure to give this video a thumbs up, make sure to subscribe, and make sure to tell me what is your most annoying thing while game collecting because I'm pretty sure I missed a bunch and I'm pretty sure there's going to be a part three to this because there's always things that come up while game collecting that can be super annoying. This was more of the physical parts of game collecting. Last time was more of when you're trying to get games, but this is more of after you've gotten the games. What are some annoying things that happen? I don't know, I, I kind of touched base on this a little bit in my last video, but there's definitely some more things that you can cover, and I'm pretty sure I missed a bunch, and like I said, this will be a topic I go back to time and time again. Uh, make sure to follow me on my other social medias, they're probably around here in the universe somewhere, and until next time, I'll see you later.